Well, hey everyone, it's Holly Tate here, SVP of Growth on the Leader Team. And I'm so excited because today I get to talk to Phil from Kingsway Church all about his story as a leader at Kingsway and also his story with leader. <laughs> story, it's leader story with leader. So Phil, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, would love for you to start out and just share your story and what God is doing at Kingsway Church. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Holly. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, love to. We um, are in a year that's been um, a little dramatic for us in the sense that we had a lead pastor transition. So um, now I'm in that seat and serving in that capacity before I was on our lead team. Um, our lead pastor felt it was time for him to resign and head on to another area of ministry. And uh, through the course of the year um, in 2021, um, I have assumed the reins um, in, of that role of lead pastor. So it's been it's been quite a year for us, and uh, been focusing a lot this year with our team on just really bringing um, focusing on unity, stability, and strength across the church, but specifically stability and strength within our team. So trying to shore up some some things like role clarity and um, focus on where we're not necessarily where we're going, big picture vision, but making sure we're buying into where we currently are getting everybody on the same page um, before we make any, you know, quick jerks of the wheel, those kind of things, and really making sure that the team's cared for um, in that process. That's awesome, Phil. I love how you have such clear values that you're focused on in this season. So unity, uh, clarity, and strength. Was that right? Or stability? Stability. What would, stability. Yeah. Unity, 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 stability. stability yeah. Yep. Yeah. So good. Well, and thank you for being willing to step up. I know I'm not even on the Kingsway team, but I, I'm sure I can say thank you on behalf of yeah. all of the team. I know it's not easy to be um, where you're right there and you're, it's everyone's looking at you to say, okay, step up. It's time yeah. for you to step into this role as lead pastor and you're there to, to lead the team. So thank you, especially yeah. in this season where nothing has been easy over the last year and a half. That's for sure. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> yep. You're right about that. So let's dig in a little bit. I would love to hear, um, as you've stepped into the lead pastor role, you're focused on unity, stability, and strength. What are some specific leadership challenges as you've been leading the team in this new season that you've been facing? Yeah, it's great. It kind of kind of came to, together for me. And so that transition happened the last week of April. And I just felt for our team where we were, again, I was a known commodity. I've been on the team almost eight years prior to that, about seven and a half years. So, you know, I know our culture, I know our team have relationships with um, deep relationships with many people on our team. We're staff of right now, 20, about to uh, add a couple people as we get into the new year here soon. But um I did a little kind of in-house listening tour, for lack of a better term, I guess, and I uh, felt like, hey, I can't be new eyes because I've been around, but I can be fresh ears for a short season in this new seat. So um, I just took three weeks in May. We kind of just created a simple document and opened up like 40 slots for the 19 other staff members to just, hey, pick one. Let's sit down for an hour, a cup of coffee. I have a set of questions and I bought a new journal and said, I'm going to listen to you guys. So I did that with all 19 of our staff. Um, it was cool. It, it totaled up to more than 30 hours of me just listening and hearing their heart and where they saw our church themselves, what's good, what's bad, what's ugly and everything in between. But one of the things that really came to the surface, and then I, I spent an hour in one of our staff chapels after those three weeks and said, Hey, here's I've listened for 30 hours, so give me one hour to unpack everything that I found and kind of group some things together. And it was really beneficial. It was so helpful for me personally, obviously very helpful for me in trying to lead our team from that early point of the transition and the baton pass. And one of the things that Holly clearly rose to the surface for us or that I identified was not everybody on our team was getting the same level of care in that one-on-one. -on -one. And that's a big deal, right? Not just because we're a church, but because of that, but person to person on our team, we wanted everybody to feel cared for. So not everybody had a supervisor or manager they were reporting to, um, which obviously meant that there were some people on our team that didn't have direct reports or anybody to um, pour into or care for regularly. For some on our team that happened every week, um, there were a couple on our team that happened once a month, and then there were others that it might happen in a year your end evaluation. And so for me immediately, that was like, no, we got to fix that. We could do better. We can, we can reach as we're restructuring our team, which we're in the process of currently, let's make sure everybody feels cared for and valued at the same level. Um, and that was so an easy segue, as you could tell for us kind of finding leader and, um, and going, no, one of the ways that, that we could see this helping is us really um, paying attention to each person on our team, providing that care component and care element so that they feel valued for more than just what they do on our team. 
So good. And for you, for the team to see you investing 30 plus hours, there's nothing that communicates empathy and more than saying with your time, I'm listening. You know, we can say that as leaders, all we want of, Mm -hmm. Hey, we love to hear your feedback. I'm listening to you. Your voice matters. But until you carve out that time on your calendar and sit face to face and really listen and take active notes, that's really powerful, Phil. I can only imagine that that went such a long way. So as you were stepping into this role and you're listening to everybody spending over 30 hours in one-on-one meetings, what solutions were rose to the surface that you're like, okay, I've got to figure out what solutions I can bring onto the team to help me overcome some of these challenges I'm seeing. Yeah. Well, for us, we thought, Hey, part of the, part of the care element, and then also making sure we train and resource our team. Well, um, was thinking along the lines of what we had already been doing the last few years in my prior role. Um, I was in charge of overseeing and we, um, launched a few years ago, our leadership school. And, uh, when we did that, we kind of built the school, um, with our mission of, you know, developing next gen servant leaders, but saying, Hey, how do we best do that? And I'm, we're pretty simple. So we didn't, we didn't want to uh, make it more complex than it needed to be. And uh, we just said, Hey, we're going to, we're going to build students with um, their heart, head and hand. We're going to focus on those three elements. So I just kind of defaulted to that with our team. And I said, Hey, if we can care for people's hearts, if we can care for them, well, we can meet their needs, how their family's doing, how are they doing in their faith, how are they doing with their children or their spouse, if it's appropriate and relevant to them. So that's the heart part. Um, and then with their heads, like, what are they learning? What are they listening to? What are the podcasts they're hearing? What are the shows they're watching? What are the trainings that they're going to find um, that they're leaning into specific to their role? And then our team a little bit more broadly. And then the part with their hands is like, how can we best resource them, right? So I feel like a question every supervisor on our team or manager needs to ask is, hey, how do I help you do your job that you've been given? What what tangible resources can I put in your hand? What do I need to do to develop you as a leader um, in in, on, in addition to everything we're doing to develop our team in our Tuesday staff chapels or all staff meetings, those kind of things. So we took that and we said, hey, we kind of built out some leadership development documents in the last few years to ask questions. Um, so when, when I kind of found leader, it was just like, oh my goodness, no, some of even the questions that you guys have curated were right in, in line and in sync what we were beginning to ask and just a little bit different way of asking, different verbiage, fresh language to it that we're like, oh, this is this is like a hand in glove fit that can really aid our team so that we can meet the needs of each person's heart, head and hand. So um, it, it's been really helpful to us in that regard. That's awesome. I love that you are already doing these healthy leadership practices. And then we just came along and made it just made your life easier with all yeah. in one place and yep. helping you scale that across the team. How did you guys find out about leader? I, I um, Yeah. So I think I got a um, some kind of postcard actually with your name on it, because I remember seeing your name when Robin connected yeah. me with you to, for this one for this call but um and i think it's because of our partnership with southeastern university because we're an extension site of theirs that that was the connection that i saw probably in february of this past year it was right before the transition happened we knew it was pending but we hadn't had the baton pass as far as my new role and um it just caught my eye so i hopped on kind of that initial call got some information um with john and i was like oh my goodness this is everything we're already doing without the infrastructure so the fact that leader already had that built out and it's an app and it's um it's an application that we can just log into and it's cloud-based and our team has already um been leaning into that so heavily over the last, I think it's nine weeks since we rolled it out to our team. That is awesome. A match yeah. made in heaven. I love when that magic it really happens. Has, it's awesome. been so good and so That's helpful. So, good. so talk to me about, um, you said it's been about nine weeks or so. So talk to me about uh, like life for the team post leader. And I know the team is, you know, starting to use it and engage with it, but what are the, the trends that you're noticing, you know, in your downline as you're looking out across the organization? Yeah, it's really good. So we, um, my the biggest win for me is like if we can use it in all of our one-on-one meetings i asked our team um all of our our leaders and even in the middle of this reorg and restructuring our team's doing to um at least have a one-on-one every other week Uh, many of them already have uh once a week that they're meeting with their direct report so that's really good i don't want to we don't want to disrupt that if that's what works keep doing it um but at least every other week and um so that that meant me taking on some more um in until we restructure some more one-on-one so right now i have six direct reports we're trying to clean that up some a couple of other people on our team 
might only have one. So we're trying to build that out so it mirrors our new structure. But what we realized was some of our team immediately started using it for our production meetings for Sunday mornings uh, for our worship services. Others started using it for some of our small groups that they lead. And so I, I started seeing some of the engagement where we can see all the people in the section on, on our team in that section of leader and go, oh no, look at the, the engagement's really cranking up here some. And I found myself in some of the meetings I'm a part of or even lead, but I don't do admin for. Our admin just goes, hey, is it cool if I just put this all in leader? Everybody's there. I'm going to invite them to the meeting. And then the links to all the other documents that are relevant to those meetings are found in leader now. So they've taken it and just kind of have exponentially been using it that way. So it's being used um, at both of our campuses and across the board as our team, which has been really great for me because I would, I would love that, but I hadn't even pitched that idea or tried to sell that to our team yet. They just kind of um, like, hey, we're using it. Why not have everything live in the same spot? And um, it's been a great feature for our team and they've really adapted to it. So good. I love that. Everything in one place, all your documents, everything in the agenda so everybody can access it. There's no confusion. Uh, so good. Well, yeah. Phil, as other church leaders are watching this and they've con they're considering leader and bringing it on board, what would you say to those church leaders out there that still have some questions about the difference that leader can make uh, on their team? Yeah. Yeah, well, um, if what we said already isn't enough, I would say that um, I think that having everything live in one spot, um, as opposed to some things that we had in the past on a drive, on a shared drive, on some in-house networks and whatnot, um, everything for leadership development for our team is on the dashboard. It's in that interface that they can use in leader. And so for me, that was really valuable because it, I, you know, I can go quickly and see all of my direct reports. I can see our org chart um, and, and our structure for our, our team. Um, I can even see uh, the feedback. We just started using that feature in the last couple of weeks. And, um, and that's been really big for us because some of it we figured out, we watched some of the tutorial videos, some of our teams, we recently came out of a month focusing on what we do for missions. So our director of missions was able to send a feedback to all of our team um, yesterday. And this is pretty record breaking for us in less than 24 hours, half of our team replied to her 10 question feedback. It was a long form. I was blown away today when she shared that with our team that that many people replied, but because leaders made it that easy, and it's a quick email notification. They log right in. Um, I see a lot of our team throughout the week just walking by their desk. The application's open. Um, they're on the site. They're using it regularly. And um, even with the six people that I currently have reporting to me, they're populating. My deal with them is I'm going to populate what we're going to talk about, what I want to talk to you about at least 24 hours prior to our meeting, asking the same of them. And um, because it's being reciprocated, we can each know, hey, they're gonna, he's going to ask me this or she's going to bring this to me. And that's been really helpful for us. And there's even a couple elements that we haven't gotten into yet. My ongoing coaching once a month with, with Robin, she's been kind of unpacking some of those things. So I found that really helpful too. And um, her to give us some language on how to best interpret, hey, is our team really engaging with this? And to hear her say um, a couple of weeks ago, we were on our last call, like, no, your metrics are great on what I can see on our end. And even to give me some um, help in translating what I'm looking at so I can see, you know, what some of those status bars going, you know, was it red, yellow, and green, um, yep. how our team's engaging with that. So um, that's been really, really helpful for us. I think the thing that I use the most is certainly the meetings portion of that right now. But what we're getting ready to move into in 22 is, um, is have all our reviews for next year, year end there. We took a half step this year in 21 so that we can be set up for that on leader next year but we're going to have quarterly goals for each person on our team so that when we get to the year end reviews next year, it's not like, Oh, I have to go remember what you did back in February. That's documented now. And it all lives in one place. And one more quick feature that I love is that when I go into a meeting that I can click on that, Hey, um, make it recurring for the next meeting. And then I just yes. kind of go in there and edit based on, Hey, we need to follow up about this. Let's let that stay there and live there. And let me add these couple of elements. So that's been, I know that's several things, but there's so much value in that for us because it's already the heart of what we were doing. And this just gave us a way to express that and keep it all in one place. So good. And to develop your additional team members, because it just sounds like um, your approach to leadership is is already so organized. <laughs> like you had the one-on-one -on -one meetings, you had your moleskin, you're sitting down ready yeah. to go. But for new leaders, they don't know how to lead a one-on-one -on -one right. meeting if yeah. they never have yeah. before. And so yeah. for you to be able to model that from the top and then create a system where they're able to um, have that that jump start, you know, yes. when, when yeah. they're leading their first one-on-one -on -one meeting. 
yeah. is just really powerful. Well, Phil, so, we are, oh, go ahead. Sorry, Phil. No, I was just going to say, and just to offer that point real quick, Holly, the thing that's helpful now is because when in our restructure, we'll have some people that weren't supervisors or managers in our old structure that will be now, but we've already led them to, because they're being um, they're on the receiving end of the one-on-one as a direct report, now they have an idea of what's expected. And then we'll do a little bit of training to to kind of catch them up to speed on here's how you effectively lead a one-on-one and use leader as the tool. Yes. So good. Well, Phil, thank you so much for sharing your story today and all that you're facing there um, as you're restructuring and leading the team there at Kingsway. We're so grateful you guys are on the leaderboard and that we get to serve you and help develop leaders there at Kingsway. Um, And I know that you sharing your story is going to be helpful to so many other churches out there that are taking a look at leader. So thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate what you guys do and for how it's helped us here. Thanks, Holly.